This is a 2001 Nissan Sentra, the 1.8. And I'm gonna be checking the crankshaft position sensor. Right now I'm gonna do an inspection. First, a visual inspection to see what I, what's going on. And I'm gonna do a resistance test. I found there's a recall um, for this vehicle. And then I have a code and everything is going to the same direction that this could be the problem, the crankshaft position sensor. So I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do a resistance test. I'm gonna first I'm gonna do an inspection and then remove the sensor and check for the resistance. Okay, so there's the starter over there. The oil filter and the sensor should be on the bottom and it's right there I, you can barely see the connection I checked for um to see if there's any anything that looks abnormal everything looks good everything I'm just gonna remove the sensor and do the test okay so it's a quarter inch ratchet that I'm using with an extension and a 10 millimeter as you can see I have my hand on the other side of the subframe that's how I'm holding the ratchet I still have the connector um, on the sensor and just be very careful not to break nothing especially those plastics because with the heat the muffler is right here so with the heat it gets all that plastic very fragile they can break you see And there's a sensor okay first of all there there was a service bulletin for this code p0335 for a 2001 Nissan Sentra it's the 1.8 um, so it's you we can say just replace it right but there was one thing one problem it was full of oil and we'll go to that later but that's something that I noticed it was just full of oil but the temperature it has to be to 75 or 20 uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius and your spec it's gonna be a hundred and sixty six to two hundred and four and this is the pins one two and three and we can say how we can identify the number one, two, and three pins. Is it like that? Or is it like that? Right? So on the diagram, you can just check, check by the colors. Or sometimes on Mitchell or on all data, it gives you just the picture like that. So how we're going to check the pins, it's exactly like this. That's going to be my number one, two, and three. So we're gonna go with the negative lead on number one and the positive lead on number three. And we gotta be on ohms and I put it on 2000. And I don't got nothing. And then we're gonna go on number one lead and number two lead and I don't get nothing. So this is a good sensor, it's a known good, um, from a Nissan. And make sure you're doing the correct um, test. Make sure you have the correct um, um, pins identified, because if you have them the wrong way, 
it's gonna give you a wrong number a wrong reading it's gonna give you like right there it gave me 16 and then right here it's just giving me out of limits that's why we gotta make sure which one's which so that's giving me giving me 632 and it's giving me 778 the reason it's giving me high resistance is because it's not on the desired temperature for this to be functioning but this is a known good sensor okay so now with the problem of the oil if we put a new sensor that means that that sensor is gonna fail probably or it's not gonna do a good reading because of the oil and we are here with another Nissan right there's where the your starter goes right there and your sensor goes right there and we can say why is it full of oil so this is the back side of the of an engine so your sensor goes right here right there so what is the cause of the oil and we can see that we have this one right here the rear main seal and then we have one for the that's on on the rear main seal this cover has a little gasket that goes in there and then we have another one that's like an upper oil pan So we gotta fix the oil problem first and then we'll go with the replacing the sensor. All right, so I have a new sensor that I'm gonna replace and I am not going to erase the codes on the, on the car. I'm gonna install the sensor. I'm gonna do a test drive. The customer complaint was that after four miles, the engine was gonna turn off. So after four miles, if it doesn't turn off, then I know we for sure fixed the problem. And if for any, in any case, if it turns off, I'm gonna remove the sensor again. And if it's really wet again with oil, then I'm gonna tell the, the customer that we need to fix that problem, the oil leak on the rear main. But first I'm gonna install the sensor and then we're going on from there. Okay, so I'm doing the test drive. There's no codes. I've been driving it for like 18 miles already and no problems. So uh, we already fixed it, but we have to uh, tell the customer that there's that leak and it's going to affect the sensor, probably. So. I'm gonna be driving 